All right, members, we might get started. Um, so I would like to open the special meeting of Thursday the 13th of August. Um, Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living there today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Item two on the agenda is apologies and leaves of absence. I have two apologies from Councillor Mackey and Councillor Donovan. I believe Councillor Kouros is late and we have lost Councillor Abrahim today. He's lost, he's wandering around, lost, and some we hope he may turn up soon. Uh, members, we've got several reports tonight. I would also welcome those members of the public that have been able to join us in person, noting, of course, that the COVID-19 density requirements indoors public meetings where I'm only allowed to have six members in the gallery. So thank you for making time to join us tonight. Um, the first report members is item 3.1, which is the Adelaide Central Market Authority business plan and budget. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Ho. Um, members, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, just a, a question, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, we, as a city, are spending fifty-four million dollars redeveloping the Central Market Arcade to drive a cash-positive result for the city, and yet uh, the Central uh, Market is forced to borrow from the papers. It is clear two hundred thousand dollars for works caused by that. And that development is also, uh, it is said, responsible for part of the further $855,000 in borrowings that the central market uh, is required to undertake. But can we have some detail? Is there some breakdown to tell us how much of that $850,000 in addition to the $200,000 is required for works caused by the central market arcade redevelopment? Certainly, Councillor Martin. And just before I go to the CEO, a point of clarification is $27.4 million plus a 1.3% contingency as approved by Council. Uh, Lord CEO, Mayor, that, that, if I Lord could ask Mayor, you to you, respond you are, to the. Lord Mayor, question. you are actually questioning my integrity when you I'm do not that. questioning your integrity. You are, I'm Mayor. actually talking to what we have been supplied no, Lord Mayor, and that's what we approved. Great. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Alex, can you respond to this? Yes, through the chair. Uh, the operating deficit of uh, approximately $1.5 million relates to um, a number of aspects in terms of the operations of the central market. Uh, the only aspect that relates to central market arcade uh, is some marketing uh, initiatives. Uh, to support the ongoing uh, promotion of the market. Uh, beyond that, the only impact that the Central Market Arcade Redevelopment has is approximately a $40,000 impact on the uh, parking revenue of the Central Market. Uh, and just Lord Mayor again, for the sake of clarity, there is no part of the borrowings of 855000 that is associated with the Central Market Arcade Redevelopment. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't actually hear the question because you were facing the other way. Oh, so sorry. there's no part of... There is no part of the $855,000 proposed at three that is part or caused in response to the Central Market Arcade okay, Redevelopment. CEO. Thanks, Alex. Uh, through the Chair, the only impact there is is the $40,000 I mentioned in terms of the That's reduction part. in parking revenue for Central Market. Thank you. Uh, and um, Lord Mayor, um, I wonder in that circumstance whether, because I can't support that, uh, I've made my position clear on that, whether you would take this in parts, otherwise I will have to vote. 
vote against it. Um, I'm very happy, members, to take it in parts. Which part did you not support? Well, I don't support three and four. Uh, three that's and four. borrowing is required as a consequence of the, the uh, mm -hmm. redevelopment. Yeah, no need to support that. Yeah. 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 I will seek leave of the meeting to take it in parts. Mm -hmm. Members, uh, I mean, um, you know, I don't think it's going to make terribly much difference to the outcome if you want to take it in parts. No. No? Okay. Um, any other questions? If not, I'll go back to the move to summer. Um, I could have interjected, um, but I opted not to, to correct Councillor Martin. Um, uh, when I started up, of course, the claim that the capital works here are as a result of the Central Market Arcade redevelopment um, uh, is false. Uh, things such as main switchboard replacement, wastewater infrastructure compliance, installing backflow prevention, sewer connections, escalator replacement. These, these, are, these, are not, these are not related. I didn't say it was not related. I was questioning three and four, which is not related to five, which he's discussing. No, Councillor Martin said that uh, the borrowings, the yep. borrowings are related to the central market. Okay, so no. The so borrowings in their totality is 4.4. Five six million. No. Um, uh, well, then we need to be less sloppy with our language. But um, Lord oh, Mayor, this is, look, this is, he, he has misunderstood, and he's now seeking to criticise me. This is a good budget, Lord Mayor, in its totality. Um, uh, there are lots of works here which need to be undertaken. Of course. While it sits on our balance sheet um, uh, as debt, uh, the central market um, is ours. It belongs to the city of Adelaide, it belongs to the people of Adelaide. Um, uh, an accounting uh, sort of quip to have it presented as the way that it is, I think, is, is not accurate. And this is an investment on our part into a, a much loved South Australian icon. Um, uh, I think it's very important. And I think uh, at three and four, um, considering they're somewhat contentious, apparently, uh, very happy to see extra investment there uh, to keep the central market active, uh, to support the traders there, to support the authority and the work that they do um, uh, while construction is undertaken on the RK. Uh, this is a city shaping project. This is the biggest project uh, that the City of Adelaide has ever uh, undertaken. $400 million worth of investment, construction, it's about job creation. It's about safeguarding the city's revenue base into the future. Um, uh, that's what the arcade redevelopment is going to bring us. And so this budget underpins much of that. It continues to support the good work of the authority. Um, and I'm very, very pleased to move it. Um, and I think the, the councillors who, uh, I hope all of us will vote in favour of this, but the councillors who vote in favour of this are those that wish to see the city grow, grow prosper and progress. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Against? Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Right. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kouros. Members, that takes us to 3.2, which is the Rundle Mall Management Authority 2020-2021 Business Plan and Budget, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kerr, and a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kerr, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? No, if not, back to the move to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canal, Councillor Sims, Councillor Kuros. Members, item 3.3 on the agenda tonight is the 2019-2020 quarter four finance report. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you oh, wish to speak? Right. Councillor Abraham today. Right. Members, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor. Um, the uh, administration's advice at QF3 uh, was that council would have an annual operating deficit of about $20 million. 
Um, it is, as we can see from this document, in fact, $10.5 million for the financial year, which means we did 45% uh, better than was, pre uh, was uh, predicted just 12 weeks earlier. And uh, the administration is tipping a $36 million uh, operating deficit in, uh, or 33, I think this actually, in uh, 2021. And I, I do hope that they're 45% wrong in the right direction, not the wrong one. Um, uh, but I believe that it will be less because um, much of our spending is discretionary uh, and indeed our borrowings have been reduced because of that discretionary action from uh, 73 to $51 million, um, which is, you know, 20, $22 million is a lot. That would build another Gawler Place, although I just can't imagine why anyone would want to build another Gawler Place. Um, it's pretty awful. Now. Um, it, it will be said that uh, um, we got to this point um, because uh, we didn't do stuff. Um, we postponed things and that, that is legitimate. But I think the point that needs to be made here is that these results are showing a significantly better bottom line. And it's, um, it's going to be very hard, I think, for the team, uh, great acrobats that they are, for them to be able to somersault around and say that we are in such dreadful financial circumstances that we have to restructure and remove staff. Because the truth is, we're 45% lower on our operating deficit and we're $22 million lower on our borrowings. Um, our financial position has improved and it is possible for council to improve things without proceeding with redundancies. Uh, Deputy CEO, would you like to clarify any of those points that Councillor Martin made just around the change to the budget in the last 12 weeks? I think we did discuss them at the committee. If there's anything you want to reiterate? Um, not only is it in relation to timing, it is in relation um, to our response to COVID, um, where we reduced um, unnecessary expenditure through um, every mechanism we could to ensure we had cash flow um, through to the end of June. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Um, of course, the, the idea that we were 45% um, better is not, uh, is not true. I don't think it's better to have to re-time $42 million in expenditure. I don't think it's better that our revenue took a $10 million hit. And these are, of course, some of the many factors that uh, conspired to put us in this position that we're in. So to say that it's better um, uh, is not good at all. I think it's a, a gross mischaracterisation. Um, uh, I would commend the staff though. I would commend the staff on uh, how they uh, have managed uh, our books throughout this crisis. Um, uh, I would commend the, the CEO and of course the deputy CEO and her team uh, on what they've uh, been able to do to to reel in some of that discretionary expenditure, but also to keep the city going at the same time. Um, I acknowledge uh, uh, Director Devonish and the Business Continuity Plan and um, Commander uh, um, uh, Vanessa with, with her work as well. So um, uh, it's a fantastic job. Um, there's a long way to go to repair the books. Uh, and of course, the Miami Way and all the growth stuff uh, done by Ian, because you start mentioning people, you can't, you can't no, stop. No. And, um, <laughs> uh, and, and your leadership <laughs> board uh, throughout this as well, because I know it's been all hands on deck. So, um, uh, so yes, the result is not better. Um, uh, it is perhaps less worse than it could have been if we didn't have such a highly skilled executive um, uh, and Lord Mayor at the helm. So, so thank you for that. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is division. carried. We like a division. <laughs> Council members, the division has been called. All, all those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain stand until all names have been called. Okay. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kanoa, Councillor Kuros. Members, that takes us to item 3.4 on the agenda, reshaping our organisation. I look for mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Shaping our organisation. So, excuse me, Councillor Moran. No, I have not excused you for a long time. Councillor Moran.
Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I have um, a slight alternative motion to what was originally in the papers. Would you like to give a moment while members read what okay. that is? What the fuck? Give them a new job? At the second, it was Councillor Canal. Happy to accept the return motion. Councillor Moran, I'm very angry, Lord Mayor. I'm very angry that our staff have been put out in the street during a pandemic. I'm very Councillor angry. Moran, I'm not asking you to make a speech. I'm just asking you to please. If you would like to speak, do what you're supposed to do in the chamber and put your hand up and I will call your name. I don't think so. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Of course, um, we, know, we know full well that um, we by and large have an excellent uh, staff at our, at our council um, and an excellent administration. They are highly competent. Um, uh, and very effective. Um, however, uh, as a public service organisation and as a level of government, um, uh, we operate within laws. Within those laws are regulations and delegated regulations. Within that, there are departments. Within that, there are protocols, there are procedures, and there are policies. Um, and uh, what I think this report acknowledges um, is that our staff are only as effective as the policies, procedures, protocols, reg regulations, and laws that govern them. Um, and this seeks to take that dynamic um, uh, and twist it around and have a bit of a different think about it. So, um, and with that, uh, what I would say as well that, is that it's, it's never easy um, uh, having to reduce one's staff. I've had to do it before. It's not an easy decision. Um, to make, but when the good of the goal that you're trying to achieve, when that is your primary focus and that is your driver, um, uh, I think it's you need to weigh that against itself um, uh, and proceed accordingly. But you can proceed accordingly uh, in a kind and compassionate way. Um, that's why I've put forward this uh, variation, which uh, reaffirms the council's commitment uh, to support all of our people. Um, and approves extra transition support measures for all employees. Um, and in particular, we're thinking about future job readiness and mental health support. So uh, there are a number of measures that are already in place um, that the City of Adelaide and the administration already have in place. Uh, but I think there is room uh, to expand those measures um, uh, so that uh, our, our workforce um, has the best chance, um, if throughout the restructure they're no longer with us, uh, of succeeding um, uh, later in life. So I think it's a very important thing to put in place. But um, furthermore, I also don't want to have that um, distract from the other contents of the report, which is um, uh, a huge rethink of how our organisation uh, operates in practice. Um, and the, uh, the split, as it will be, of things into, assuming this is successful, into local government uh, services, uh, which are mandated by law, capital city um, uh, services and goals and aspirations, which obviously differentiate us uh, from the 61 other councils in South Australia. Um, uh, and of course, uh, alongside that, whether you put it underneath or on top, uh, the corporate support um, and the corporate operations that, that make those other things happen, um, I think is a very sensible uh, way to go about it. Just 30 seconds more. Please. Make it stop. Um, uh, it's a very sensible way to go about it. It is, um, and I and I completely understand that, and I've seen it from from when I started here, and I understand it happened from before then as well. A constant tweaking, changing, a restructuring. But I think uh, this is a model that will serve um, us well going forward. It will serve the ratepayers better. Um, it'll make councillors' jobs. Uh, a lot more clear 
uh, because it will outline to them precisely uh, the matter, the policy, the expenditure that they're dealing with, uh, why it is coming to them, and thus the, the lens that they should be applying uh, when they vote on said policies and expenditure. So um, I think this, uh, this is a bold reformation. Um, I think uh, it will be successful, and I think it will provide a framework for other councils um, as well, and potentially other capital cities um, as, uh, as we look to emerge from the pandemic. Thank you. Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak? Um, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, I just want to start by making it clear that my, my criticisms um, in relation to this are not criticism of the work of our administration. Um, and I'm very appreciative of the work that has been done. Um, and I think the administration has sought to execute the directives of the council. Um, and I know people have been working very hard to do that under very challenging circumstances. So I'm not being critical of um, the work that has been done. I am, however, being critical of the direction that has been set that has informed this approach. Um, and, you know, several months ago when uh, Councillor Hyde proposed his motion to uh, make $20 million worth of cuts, it was Councillor Martin and uh, myself who argued that we needed to have a committee that sort of talked through what that would um, look like. Um, and my view has always been that we also need to have a conversation with the community about how we respond to this pandemic and actually gauge their views around what they see as being the important work of this council. None of those things um, have happened. Instead, we have really outsourced the decision making to administration. We have instead um, what is going to be, I fear, a rationalisation of services that are provided to our community at a time when we have more and more people in our community experiencing economic disadvantage as a result of this pandemic who are reliant on the uh, services that are provided by um, levels of government such as ours. And so at a time when the community needs us the most, we are going to be reducing our services offering. And I think that's a great shame, and I'm very unhappy about the way in which that's been approached by this council. I'm also very unhappy about the potential for jobs to be lost at this time. And I note in uh, the um, alternative motion that we're considering, there is a contradiction between number six and seven. Number six, supports the staff and recognises we're going to support our people, whilst number seven says we're going to be making some of them redundant. Now, I have real concerns about the implications of that. That's my personal uh, view. Um, and, you know, I think the, the comments of the minister, former minister for local government are really instructive in that regard, where he said that council should do everything possible to keep people employed and keep services operating. If councils scale down their services and operations unnecessarily, it will mean more people are out of work, which is the last thing we need at this time. I couldn't agree more um, with um, the minister, former Minister for Local Government in, in, um, in that regard. Um, and I, I'm really concerned about the direction that we are taking, one that has been done without appropriate community consultation, without um, adequate discussion uh, within this council in terms of going through the details and working it through. Just a second more, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, in terms of working it through as a body, a collective body and trying to reach consensus. And I'm very, very concerned about the organisation that we are going to have um, at the end of um, this pandemic. Um, I fear for the community that rely on our services and I fear for our staff. I think this is the wrong direction for us. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, look, I echo that at, at, um, completely. When um, the CEO came on board, um, obviously that was a different council, he asked, do you want to restructure? And his son and I were threw up hands in horror and said, oh my God, this council's been restructured so many times. No, we don't. Now that's the new council can change the direction. And I'm not completely against, uh, I have been supportive of uh, reducing staff numbers, but Blind Fred can see that this is not the time to do it. When we shared staff in the past, when it wasn't a pandemic, the, this was considered a good training ground and they were eminently employable. Not one firm or any uh, business will be hiring for the next 12 months. So every person you sat now 
will be on the unemployment line. Now these are people of, of that middle age, of, of late of middle 30s to middle 40s that have young children, have house mortgages, and you are throwing them onto the dole. And the only way to do number seven is to keep them in employment. Uh, my husband and many medical firms, legal firms, and children and lawyers, their firm sentiment beginning of the pandemic, we will not reassure you, we will keep you on till the end of the pandemic. You may have to work from home and take a slight cut, but don't worry about your job. Every decent firm did that, and we haven't done that. Um, we, I don't agree with Alex Hyde on pretty much everything, but particularly that we are in a better state than um, we were. We're actually improving our financial because the CEO is doing a good job doing that. But sacking staff and saying that they're happy about it, and saying we can give them mental health thing when they're going to have to sell their houses um, and stay on the dole for maybe one to 18 months before people start hiring again. And there's hundreds of them. When we sat on the dinners that were confidential, I know, uh, the CEO was telling us about, I had no concept that we would be firing people. That, that, I, I don't ever remember that being discussed. It was always restructuring and skinny, you know, making it simple, the processes. This is a, this, to, to say that this makes a more efficient organisation is a bit like, I'm sorry, um, Stephen saying we're going to be a thousand bus stops, going to make the service of buses better. So hiring, firing half our vulnerable staff is going to make us have a better service. We're not idiots. It's going to lose services, we'll lose people, there will be suicides, mental health issues. I urge you to stop this. Do it in a year's time when everything's hopefully bounced back and these people who are in the middle of their working life can go and get another job somewhere. They cannot get a job now. You are throwing them onto the scrap heap in the middle of their working lives. It's cruel, it's unprofessional. When everything gets better again, we'll find that we haven't got enough staff. I've seen it before. We cut the start. Blah, blah, blah. Then we come back, everything's burning, we have to rehire. And you know what it leaves in the mouths of your workers? Distrust and hatred. You should speak to them out on the front ground. And that they're not happy. So I urge you, I mean I know I'm putting on deaf ears because you're all good with these over there says. Uh, and it's obviously not uh, a staff initiative. This is obviously coming from PMA. That is a shocking thing to do. You are ruining the organisation. You are getting rid of workers that are vulnerable. Stop it now. Members? Councillor Martin. Just a couple of, uh, and first one for the CEO throughout uh, the document. Um, this once in a generation change uh, references a principle which is called the assessment of market contestability. Um, and it keeps talking about service contestability. It talks about uh, service contestability being made with other organisations better placed. Now, I keep reading the word outsourcing. Is, is that what this is about? Is this going to lead to us giving to the private sector to other individuals uh, roles that are currently undertaken by our staff. Through you, Lord Mayor, we have a duty of care to ensure that the, the services we provide and the work that we do um, is benchmarked to the to other governments and to other and to the private sector. Contestability is determining the best approach to provide that function. Um, the intention would be to undertake an assessment of the roles that we have and whether or not they can be better undertaken um, by another means uh, or not. And decisions would need to be made in consultation with council at that time. So it's merely a process of assessing um, the ability of us to undertake the required works in the best possible way. So am, can... am, am I understanding you are not ruling out outsourcing? Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, outsourcing is one, one lever um, that Council may wish to consider in the future. There is no doubt in that. But there are many other levers as well. Um, and the intent through this process over the next couple of months is to determine the best approach and to come to Council and to provide um, the advice as to the way we intend to go forward. All right. Uh, at 10.2, Lord Mayor, the CEO gives an undertaking to consult council members um, to a reasonable degree when determining or changing to a significant degree the organisational structure of the staff of the council. Um, what is a significant degree? 159 souls 
have been shown the door at this organisation in the past six months. More are on the way. In fact, here's today's list. Um, I, I just want to know, is 15% uh, the, the figure at which we get consulted, or is it 10% or 25% removal will get a degree of consultation to a, a reasonable degree? Yes, yeah, three, Lord Miller. I'm fully aware of the Local Government Act provisions. I'm fully aware of my responsibility to consult with you to a reasonable degree um, when we are changing the structure of council to a significant degree. Um, I believe that I've done that to date quite openly. And the intent, as I've just said a moment ago, the intent would be to provide you with further advice if we want to change the structure significantly. At this time, we have not done that. So 159 souls is not a significant restructure. We are not changing the structure at this time. When, when and if we do, when and if we meet that requirement, I will be consulting. But this is called reshaping the organisation, isn't that? Or another word for restructure, CEO? Isn't that what this heading is? Reshaping our organisation? That's on restructure? Reshaping? Reshaping the organisation is, is a very different thing to a restructure. And, and so I, I was hoping that the report would have quite clearly set out the approach we're going to be taking. So in my view, I've fully complied with the Local Government Act, fully complied with the requirements of me as, as a CEO at this time. And it is a journey we need to take over the next few months. Um, the intent is for, for these um, these matters to be further considered um, and to be discussed with you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah, well, to, to that point then, in reading this document, it is impossible to ignore that the budget provides for $14.1 million or $0.3 million for restructuring and redundancies. If the administration can be certain of the amount that it requires to effect the change, why can it not share with us how much of that is devoted to redundancies and therefore what are the numbers that stand behind that figure and what are the amounts that are required for restructure and where are they being spent? Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, through Lord Mayor, all I can advise you is it's a provisional sum and um, that is what we have decided is appropriate at this time. So uh, would it be fair for me to say that this elected body is being asked to approve the allocation of more than $14 million for a restructure which the uh, the administration cannot tell us um, anything about, most particularly the number of staff who will go as a result and the number of services that will, will be cut, reduced or changed in some fashion, but you are asking for us to approve that $14 million. Yeah. Yeah. Through Lord Mayor, yes, that is exactly correct because it's a, prov it's a provision that we are seeking to have included in the budget papers at this time. Okay. Thank you. I have Councillor Kouros and then Councillor Moran had a question. Yes, I yes. have a question. I can wait till after you. Councillor Kouros. Sorry, yes. Councillor Moran. No, no, I'm happy for Councillor Kouros. No, you can go. Sorry. I no, thought okay. you had finished when the you actually stopped. The protocol stopped. requires you to acknowledge Councillor Kouros. I will speak after the hill. That's it. Maybe, maybe just a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got a list actually here, so I'll, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it is very difficult and uh, I, I think everyone is feeling um, the despair in this and it's not something that's taken lightly and I want that to be clear that it's not a report that we read and we don't lose sleep over it. Um, it's a pandemic. It is worldwide. It is something that we are all feeling personally and in our own lives. Um, and this is, uh, we're not immune to it and we're not immune to the effects of this pandemic. Uh, Network Chain hasn't been immune to it. Of course, Qantas and Virgin, even more worse, um, they have to stand down employees who would think that, you know, being a providing essential services would, wouldn't uh, be affected at all. Um, the retail sector has suffered e uh, education, even at a university is um, asking their employees to either take a pay cut or uh, lose 400 jobs. So it is across the sector, it is not just directed to us, 
if you want to survive, you have to put the provisions in the budget. It's just what you need to do in order to, to be able to keep your services running. I, I understand the despair, I, I do get it, but we have to also protect this organisation, not for just the what we're going to provide for the employees that will be leaving, but also um, the ones that we do have. We do not want to run this into insolvency. We want to keep our, our, our services going for our public. We want to keep it for the ratepayers. Um, I even I'm speaking to a lot of ratepayers. They are saddened by the fact that we have to do this, but they know. We all feel it. We all know it. It is, it is worldwide. We're all feeling it. And it's something we've never gone through before. And if we've gone through recessions, but you can plan for recessions. You can, you, but we have a virus that we do not know how long it will be around. And what I mean by planning recessions is that, is that you don't have the restrictions that are always in play on businesses and people's livelihoods that we have at the moment. We have this virus that we do not know when the, we will get a vaccine. We do not know how to plan the future. Everyone's doing it in their organisations, big or small. You're cutting back, you're, doing the, you're going back to basics and you're, you're removing staff, not because you want to, it's because you have to survive. This is only about survival. Um, Councillor Miranda had a question and then I'll go to Councillor Martin. Oh, wait, thanks. Um, Councillor Martin. Because I might be answered in the debate. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, a question first uh, uh, for the um, CEO. I'm quite worried uh, at Councillor Kouros' reference to Council going into insolvency. Is that close? Okay. Mm -hmm. Through you, Lord Mayor. Can I just be really clear? Our operating deficit is currently forecast to be $36.4 million. That is not sustainable for any organisation. Just be clear about that. Yeah, but are we is close it, to insolvency as a consequence? Can I just carry on? Oh, sorry, I thought you finished. And and tonight, we're, just to be clear, we, we are trying to respond to the directive of council that we achieve $20 million in savings. That $20 million in savings is, I assume, aimed at trying to address the deficits that we are experiencing. And so I think it's very important to understand. I don't believe it's correct to say we are trading while insolvent or anywhere near that. But I don't think we need, need to lose sight of the fact that we have a significant <coughs> and very real challenge financially and we need to address it somehow. So as much as I don't like the idea of having to respond to a requirement to find $20 million, as much as I don't like the idea of having to look at reducing staff, or looking at other levers, or, or looking at service that was as long as much as I don't like doing that. The fact is that we have a financial challenge we have to address, and that is a $36.4 million deficit. That is enormous. We have to do something, and we have to do it. And, and the requirement to find $20 million is something that I believe will go some way to correcting our financial position. Just one final quick question, Lord Mayor. Given that the City of Adelaide has higher income than any other local government area in South Australia, has more assets, and in some cases less debt, why is it the City of Adelaide is the only local government area in South Australia restructuring in the middle of a pandemic? See you. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. I've spoken to you many times. Um, you are aware that as a capital city council, there are unique circumstances that apply to us, just as they apply to other capital cities around Australia. And that is that our income is made up, as you know, um, by a mixture of both rate income and fees and charges. And the fees and charges component has been hit dramatically through COVID, as is a portion of our rate income. And so, there are no other councils in South Australia that are experiencing the financial impacts that we are. Therefore, there are no other councils at this time through necessity of looking at restructuring to save money. Thank you. Yes, thank Martin, you. Are you yes, now I, going to speak? I do wish to speak. Look, Lord Mayor, we are in the eye of this pandemic. 
it is a particularly uh, difficult time and uh, it saddens me that this city has done virtually nothing uh, for its ratepayers. Um, uh, even voted down proposals for rate reductions. The best we've done is for our tenants uh, like Franz, we've given them free rent, free rent for Franz and others. So uh, our response uh, to any reasonable observer is that we appear to be exploiting this pandemic uh, with an excuse of a uh, desperate financial circumstance, which as we've heard already has improved. 40% down, 45% down on our operating deficit in 12 weeks, borrowings down $22 million. And this on the back of 159 souls shown the door at the City of Adelaide in the past six weeks. More to come. Uh, here's today's list. I have no idea why we are removing print operators, consumer insights people, content makers, lighting designers, development facilitators, architects, senior transport engineers, parking information officers, analysts, communications, it goes on and on. It's, it is appalling. This is happening as we speak. Uh, and this, uh, this jobs massacre, Lord Mayor, this jobs massacre is a proceeding um, with many uh, of the team and you too, Lord Mayor, saying it is the responsibility of the CEO. The CEO will guide us through all of this. Well, the, the truth of the matter is, and yes, that's been said on radio. In fact, Councillor Canal said it last night. Um, this here is the point at which the CEO is passing responsibility to you to say, I accept responsibility for the sacking of these people and the restructure of the organisation. Even though I might add, by the way, in this reshaping our organisation, there's no detail whatever. You don't know how many are going, you don't know how it's going to be reshaped, you don't know which service is going to be cut, you don't know anything. Um, but you are taking responsibility. And, and therefore, if you vote yes to this, if you vote this, yes to this, then you are saying that I am prepared to see staff members lose their jobs, their careers, the chance of finding another job at this yeah. time, any time soon, in fact. You're recognising that many of them have young families, that they have mortgages, and that their health, their families, their homes may be at risk, even though they've not been responsible for any of the unsustainable debt and financial decisions that this council has made. They are going to be at the brunt of it. So if you say to that, yes, then you are, uh, you must be prepared, just one second more, Lord Mayor, Fairness. you must be prepared, you must be prepared to say uh, oh, yeah. when you walk past an unemployment queue or even a provider of emergency services to the community, you must be prepared to say, well, you know, I, I, I did that, yeah, I was part of that. And, and if you do that, and, and I don't expect it to happen anytime soon, by the way, but if one day you do think that, then I, I just hope that you actually feel the shame that you ought to about this moment, about this moment. Councillor Kerr and then Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, um, I take real issue uh, and exception uh, with the characterisation uh, of finding efficiencies, uh, even in good times, let alone in bad, uh, with the characterisation that it is inherently immoral. Um, this is, this is uh, you're going to keep talking, Bill? Oh, right, just talking. Am I allowed to speak? I don't think just it's immoral. Although I think that is immoral. Members. 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 Um, so, um, the characterisation that is being made and the aspersions being cast uh, that somehow uh, it is the fault. Uh, of the administration of the Lord Mayor, uh, that people are on the unemployment queue. I take great uh, exception to. Well, it. I, I think it is. I think. Um, I think it is. I think it is. It was stated now, clearly in the previous Ray, speech. It was stated you, clearly in the previous speech that people should walk past the doll queue. The inference is clear. I take. Get your facts straight. Moran. No, no Councillor Moran. Stop yeah, interrupting. If you want to speak, put your hand up. At, at a certain point, uh, my constituents are going to demand that there's this tyranny of speaking over speakers that Councillor Moran continually engages in uh, will have to stop. 
All right. Um, and I'd, I'd like the full time allocated to me. My constituents would like that. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I take great exception to the inference. I think it is opportunist. I think it is frankly shameless. The reality, the reality is that uh, efficiencies uh, are actually something that every organisation must strive to find because what happens is resources get reallocated into other parts of the economy. What efficiencies do is increase uh, the overall number of jobs. If you don't do that, especially during a time like this, you will cause even greater unemployment uh, than, if you, than if you do. Um, it is not the fault, it is not the fault of this organisation that there is unemployment right now. It is the fault of a crisis called COVID. That is the cause of the unemployment. The logical extension of the path being laid down uh, by councillors Moran, Sims and Martin, the logical extension of what they are saying is that we should borrow enough money to employ the tens of thousands of people who are now facing job losses across the entire state. The public, know, the public know this. The public, the logical extension of what they're saying is that we should borrow, and the logical extension of what we're saying is, is of what they're saying is that we should borrow to employ uh, everyone who's losing a job. The public know this. The public intrinsic. Um, is there, going, is there going to be some? If there's a point of clarification or a point of order, well, can, can I get a? Can I get a? Can I get a? Can I get a? Can I get a clarification of, of his office not? Can I get a clarification yes, absolutely. of his I'm office not? I'm happy, Lord Mayor. Nah, it, it was. It, it was. No, so you just, can't, even, you can't I, even speak. So let's not bother. I'm going to continue. If you continue to interrupt other speakers. Please, A, stop it, and if you can't, please leave the chamber. It, it is a chamber. I know we're in the Colonel Lightroom. I know it's less formal than being in the chamber, but it is a council meeting, and I would ask you all to respect each other, that you have different views on this, and we have to be allowed to each speak. And so, and I, when you ask for additional time, I will give you additional time if it's at, if the chamber gives leave. I would prefer, unless it is a point of clarification, then I would ask you to put your hand up other than shout across the room so that we can all finish this debate. Um, I'm going to ask that I continue to speak without uh, interruption in the manner that the other councillors granted, councillors Sims, Moran and Martin. Uh, and if they continue to interject, uh, I'm going to declare that they are derogating from my constituents' capacity to speak and they are ushering their own personal tyranny in this chamber. Uh, and I'm going to ask for every single second that they have taken away from my constituents' ability to speak. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Kerr, thank you. Thank you. is this a point of clarification, Councillor yes, Martin? Yes. Please? And what is that point? If the point is that the speaker asked for me to expand upon why I would think he's off his nut. Okay, thank you. That's enough is. on that one. Thank no, no, you, no, no. Councillor Martin. No, no, I'm no, not accepting is. that. That is not a no. point of clarification. Councillor Moran, did you well, have a point of clarification? Could I ask you, um, as the chair, Lord Mayor? Oh. Okay, I've had enough of this. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask to press on. Uh, Lord um, Mayor. Actually, I've got a question for Lord Mayor. When a council, what should we do? Look, is, this a, is this a point of clarification? No, you can't ask questions in the middle of someone's speech. No, it is a clarification. No. When a councillor um, in my his speech starts to uh, say things, put uh, motives or intentions on other councillors that have already spoken that aren't true, um, oh, what is, is the ridiculous. procedure then to correct that? The logic this is you, utterly ridiculous. If you can actually speak to the motion before I've been speaking to the I have been speaking no, you'll be members without casting aspersions on other people in the chamber that goes for everyone, not just Councillor Kerrow. And if we could please talk to the motion before us, it would be much appreciated. In Councillor Kerrow, I'm going to start your your time from scratch. Thank you. And I, the floor is with Councillor Kerrow. I would prefer no more interruptions. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Thank you. Uh, the inference made by Councillors Sims, Martin and Moran that somehow uh, it, the inference that was made in their speech were, uh, that it is immoral for us to find efficiencies at this time, uh, I, I take grave issue with. I think that is absolutely incorrect. 
the uh, job losses have been caused by COVID. The job losses have been caused by COVID. They are job losses that have occurred across entire sectors of the economy as has been so well <coughs> articulated by Councillor Kouros. Um, the inference that this is uh, a deliberate, that there's something voluntary in the decisions by the CEO uh, and the administration or the councillors, notwithstanding the fact that it is not our remit or our purview to be making, uh, to, uh, the, uh, to comment on hiring and firing by the administration, uh, we, are, we have been granted and I think unprecedented amount uh, of, of input into uh, the running of the administration at the discretion of of the CEO, uh, despite the Local Government Act. Uh, notwithstanding that is the case, uh, it is nevertheless, um, I think, uh, grossly misrepresenting economic reality right now. Uh, we cannot uh, continue to borrow uh, and to continue to employ people who are losing jobs because of a crisis. The responsibility that the public knows and have delegated to deal with these job losses falls largely on the federal government, principally on the federal government, because it's the federal government that provides the welfare system. It's the federal government that has a central bank uh, that can essentially self-finance, and that's what it does during post-war times. We cannot continue to imperil uh, the, 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 the status and the viability of local government um, because we are afraid of these absolutely improper and I would say quite immoral characterizations of something that we unfortunately and sadly have to do. I do have the Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Kamal. Oh, my question's been asked. Councillor Kamal? <laughs> Again, like everyone, just a few points and, and uh, we think that first of all, I'd like to thank our administration because you think it at the beginning of this time, we had a plan ready to at least address the critical aspects of what has happened. And again, this is so uh, this is such an unusual time, simply because there aren't uh, there are so uh, few levers that someone can, an individual can uh, pull to be able to go out and, and find ways of of supplementing incomes or even finding other sorts of jobs simply because whole sections have been locked down so there are so many things that are so unusual now um and they in a sense dictate our, our actions and our directions and we have to remember too and uh, this is still an unfolding situation i mean if we use the words around reshaping um, and that is about something that isn't really determined yet, it's something we're actually creating or something we're, we're trying to envisage. Um, we've had one workshop around ideas that we think uh, as councillors uh, where we see our organisation, so at least they've got at least some very loose uh, uh, framework or, or direction that we are sort of giving them. So, and if you think about it, uh, as they, this gives them an opportunity to now to work forwards that we don't know what the outcome is yet, simply because there's provisions there that just enables them to uh, to uh, do various things and, and uh, fashion uh, uh, funds that have been allocated. That doesn't mean anything specific as to uh, uh, how many employees or what what new services or anything like that, but it, it gives them a mechanism to do that. We have two more stages of, in September and March where major influences from the federal government are going to de uh, determine what's going to happen don't forget, we are a highly commercial uh, city council and we are so exposed and we are, we're so much more like a, a, a normal uh, business simply because of the, the, the extra incomes that we have for uh, various services that we provide, whether it be parking or whatever. So these things influence uh, uh, what happens and if the people come back and there are obviously there are some, there's some data there that's only coming back, certain aspects are coming back, that's fantastic. That changes the dynamic that gives that help in, as they're going through this process that will help to inform them about what's going to happen. Now, you know, sustainability of this organization, organization is the most important component. We are unique. So uh, we have this opportunity and we are talking about all sorts of other activities like the, the citywide business model, etc., uh, where we are now going to refashion how we're going to interact with our cons constituents, how we guide and how we attract people here, because that's the name of the game. If, we are, if, if, if anything can happen out of here, we can, we can reallocate funds that uh, will encourage more people to come to town, that is its own solution in the first instance because that means that we, we now start to supplement the incomes, we start to support the business, start to require the services. So there's all those sorts of things that are in there as well. 
And from what I know of the people that run this organisation, they are sensitive. And I think, you know, it does matter. And I don't laugh about that because I know I've been in that place. And it's shame, and shame, man. It's awful. And I know, but if I don't do it, you won't survive. Members, are there any other speakers to this motion? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I think looking at the contributions, Lord Mayor, they, they largely uh, speak for themselves. But of course, we know, um, as I've said, I've had to let people go before. Councillor Kouros had to do the same. Councillor Noel, Councillor Ho, I'm not so sure about Councillors Kira and Abraham today, but they clearly understand the gravity of what we're doing. Um, sadly, those councillors who rail against it, um, it seems have never had to do such a thing. Oh, come on, Lord. Um, point of order. Actually, point of order. That is incorrect. That is not a point of order. Members, 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 please. Members, please stop interrupting Deputy Lord Mayor. If you can actually speak to the motion and before you speak. But when um, when it comes to this, when it comes to this, it's really, really sad to see um, at the level of debate degenerate to what we've had, Lord Mayor, on this topic, of this topic of all things. At least if councillors who disagreed with this had brought a banner to unfold or or staged some sort of protest, um, I could have more respect. But the juvenile ad hominem attacks must Didn't stop. They, 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 are, they are they are unacceptable when discussing this. Um, I understand after two years, I'm beginning to understand this organisation, this uh, a behemoth of an organisation that does many, many things. Um, and in understanding it, I understand how they deliver their work and I understand why this uh, reshaping is going to serve the organisation well into the future. When Council Moran talks about previous uh, expanding and contracting of the organisation, it tells me when I'm looking at this service directory, it tells me precisely why this service directory is how it is. So let's, let's be clear um, that as Councillor Knoll said, we are a commercial opera operation, largely speaking. We are probably one of the most commercial councils in Australia, yet we receive no commercial support. And I understand other capital cities are in similar spots, but we are particularly bad, along with the city of Hobart, as I understand it. Um, but when I look at the service directory and I look at the previous commentary, um, uh, it appears to me uh, that there has been a substantial um, uh, substantial ignorance from previous councils as to how the organisation is run and how it's doing, uh, what they're doing. When uh, thought bubble motions are brought and, and uh, staffing needs to expand and, and those sorts of things. So, uh, so in many ways, uh, this reshaping is a consequence of that mismanagement. That historic issue, that historic issue, and I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, Councillor Moran. Oh, come on, we're being offensive to you. Don't tolerate any of this. It is actually, look, as a, as a point of clarification, there have been many restructures and reshapings of this organisation over time because the world changes and every four years, is. The world is changing and we have to respond to those changes. So it is very difficult when you're actually blaming previous administrations because they went through their own reshaping. As Councillor Moran knows very well, this is not the first time we've been through this. I'm going back this probably is, 26 years. Well, <laughs> let's, let's not put a timing on it, Deputy Lord Mayor. I would love you to finish talking to your No, question. but look, I will, I will sum up. Um, as I said, it's not easy, but when we talk talk about services, I think reshaping the organisation will leave it more effective and able to deliver more services. More effective and more services. We're going to be able to deliver more projects. Absolutely. We're going to be able to do all of those things because we can have the confidence as a council knowing that it's structured properly, uh, that it's outcomes focused, um, that our workforce is being empowered to make decisions, they're being empowered to innovate because I come back to that critical, critical point, and that is um, that our staff, who are by and large highly effective, and I must say they're, they're better than most public servants I have ever worked with, state and federal, um, but they're only as effective 
as the policies, procedures, protocols, regulations and laws that govern what they do. This reshaping uh, is going to, in many ways, liberate them to be able to get better outcomes for ratepayers, whether they're businesses or whether they're residents. And that is our primary focus at the end of the day, better outcomes for ratepayers, businesses and residents. Thank you. Um, members will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand. Remain standing. Your names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kuros. Now, members, before we go to 3.5, we're going to try and have some order. Oh, sorry. Yes, actually, Councillor Martin, you are. It was an alternate motion. Sorry. Alternate. You're not correct. Um, alternate motion, so it has been. Um, 3.5. Before we go to 3.5, um, I actually am getting a little bit tired of all these interruptions. So you're all on notice. Interruptions. Three strikes, you're out, and I would like you to leave the chamber or we can adjourn because this is ridiculous. Councillor Moran. I ask you, Lord Mayor, from your position of chairing, none of us state names of people on the other side or denigrate them. We don't. These, these two here just, they don't talk to the motion, they talk to us and denigrate us the whole time. Councillor Moran, that, that, that for the entire year, you know, okay, so you, you put them all in one lump, calling them Team Adelaide. If that's not them calling names and denigrating, I don't know what is. So, members, I will reiterate, under the section, interruptions, no. Points of clarifications, yes. If you can actually please talk to the motion before you and not attack each other, I would really can appreciate I ask, it. Can I ask and that goes for every member in this chamber. And no, don't interrupt me when I'm talking. Sorry, sorry. If you want to act like children, I will have to treat you like children. And if you continue to interrupt and talk over each other, I will ask you to leave the chamber. Councillor Martin, you have your hand up. Thank you. Yeah, I have two questions, Lord Mayor, and, and the first one is a serious question. Do you regard the use of the expression Team Adelaide as a denigration? I'm not going to answer that question, Councillor Martin. Any other questions no, from no, the no, floor? No, no, second Deputy question. Lord Mayor. Um, uh, if I may, Lord Mayor, just um, a suggestion. Given that members disagree fundamentally on the facts um, about one another and about what each other is saying, it, it could be beneficial if points of clarification, as they do not need to occur in the middle of a speech, are only accepted at the end of speakers. Um, points of order, generally speaking, if it's a matter of procedure, still should occur um, while someone is talking. Um, and look, that's very fine, but help. with the step, it, with, it is actually the only time a member can interrupt is with point of order or point of clarification. So I would like perhaps for this item, uh, for there not to be interruptions, Councillor Kouros. Do you mind, Lord Mayor, if we take a five minute break? Are we a no? No. Just so everyone no. to settle. No, um, no, we don't need no. to do that. Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor, uh, and I thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for raising the issue of the standing orders. Um, which part of standing orders allows for the presiding officer to eject a member from the chamber after three warnings? Um, it is actually under section 29 of meeting procedures under the uh, local government. Yeah. Could you just, do you mind reading it to me? I can't remember it precisely. I, I'm I'll, I'll take that offline and I'll circulate it to you because it's actually in my other pack unless you would like to give that to me. Or well, could the administration read it to you? Sorry, that's fine. So, um, so subject to uh, continuing to object. Usually the, we do three times in terms of calling a behaviour, in terms of a, uh, an interruption of meetings by members behaving in improper disorderly manner, causing an interruption, interrupting another member who's speaking. And then if I consider that the member has acted in contravention, I can actually ask the member to make a personal explanation and I can ask them to leave the meeting. And, uh, further question to that, uh, for how long 
five minutes, ten minutes, the rest of the day? Um, it could actually be for part or the remainder of the meeting, and that would be up to with the leave of the chamber. So procedurally, you would call it out. Correct. You would ask them to leave, but you would then ask for a vote on how long they're not in the chamber. Thank you. Oh God, that would be out all the time then. <laughs> And if the member refuses to leave the chamber, they are guilty of an offence and the penalty, maximum penalty is $1,250. So I do have this in front of me. You've all got the Local Government Act. You've all got the meeting procedures. Can we please go to the next item of business and can we actually act like adults and discuss the motion before us? Deputy Lord Mayor. I will call uh, the adoption of the 2020-21 business plan and budget. Look for a waiver, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor just did that. And Councillor Abraham today is a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? I have reserved my right. Councillor Abraham today. Right. Members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, uh, a couple of questions for the administration. I'm looking at uh, attachment A. Um, is that the document that went to consultation to the community? CEO. Thanks, Claire. Could you want to just get just one It's the same template. Obviously, it doesn't have a draft for consultation on the front. Oh, it's, it's the, the same. Document. Updated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, uh, and I, I asked the administration to help me um, if I'm wrong about this, but I, I can't find in that document any reference uh, to more than $14 million uh, to which elected members were alerted before I went to consultation, which is required for restructuring and redundancies. Is that, is that somewhere in that public consultation document that I haven't seen? See ya. The public consultation document was um, presented to council um, as a document for consideration and was distributed previously. That's not now this document. No, I understand, but I'm asking, uh, did this document include any details, including the expenditure required for redundancies and restructuring? Uh, Have you got the page number, Alex, please? Mm -hmm. uh, through the Chair, I refer to page 207 of the agenda, which is the statement of competency being Yes. 207. 207, yes. $14 million is built within the long term financial plan as it was for the draft budget for consultation. Okay, but it, uh, which line is that? Sorry. Uh, it's contained within uh, a couple of the expenditure lines. Okay. Well, look, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, and I do seek the advice of the administration on this. Uh, um, somebody far more learned in local government matters than me says that ratepayers uh, under the Local Government Act uh, must be made aware of any proposed changes that will impact services or employment as a consequence um, so that they may be able to comment on the document. Um, it is, is it not the case then that we have not consulted or drawn to the attention of the general public that it has been our intention to restructure and to make staff redundant such that services will be affected to the extent that $14 million is required to affect those changes. CEO, Deputy CEO. Um, through the presiding member, we made it clear in the consultation draft that there was a nominal sum of $20 million. We shared our service directory with our community and um, we went through um, a process with them asking them to prioritise which services um, they valued, which ones they valued less. Um, and um, as we have um, said in the previous item on the agenda tonight, 
we will continue to work with um, our community to understand um, their attachment to services that they pay, as well as our ratepayers, as well as our city users. Um, I'd appreciate any, you know, if you've got legal advice that you have in your possession that is different from um, the advice that we work well, under, I, then I'd really but appreciate funny, it. Funnily enough, that's my next question, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, there was no question. I do understand that there was uh, a, an opportunity for people to remark upon which services they valued most or prioritise, as you put it. But there has been no mention in the document of any kind of cuts to services or to staff. Um, has the administration taken advice to determine whether its consultation has been in accordance with the Local Government Act by omitting to mention such substantial structural changes. Thank you, Deputy C. I disagree that we have omitted because, as you heard tonight, there are various methods to achieve 20 million, which may be, uh, it could be restructure, it may not be restructure. You may decide when we bring through some further thinking to you that you might um, decide to, um, you know, for the sake of argument, remove the connector bus that would save a million dollars, which would not impact any of our staff. So there could be various methods. We are working through this. No legal advice is required, I don't consider. I think our consultation was more transparent, more open. Um, and, the and the administration is happy to believe that not explaining $14 million has been allocated for restructuring of services and redundancies for staff. Not explaining that that is for that purpose it is legally in compliance with the Local Government Act provisions related to public consultation. I actually think that, uh, that question has been asked and answered, um, no, Councillor Martin. I'm, I'm so, uh, did you wish to speak? Um, yes, I, uh, I do, Lord Mayor, yes. I'd like to move an amendment. Um, and it follows there, um, and there's just a minor amendment to two, uh, adopts the budget um, um, uh, in brackets in red, um, consistent with one. So... Would you like me to read it, Lord? No, I wouldn't actually, um, Councillor Martin, because I believe that this is ultra virus, and uh, on that basis, I'm not going to accept it. I, well, I do actually have Rudy, if you'd like to talk to that or the CEO, but I have taken advice um, that it's not within our power of council to direct the CEO, um, and therefore that is an ultra virus motion. No, no, Lord Mayor, I'm not directing the, the CEO. Yo, we are considering the budget and we're changing the budget. CEO, did you wish to comment? Really, Lord Mayor, as I read that, um, I believe it is ultra virus. It's not within the power of council members to direct um, this cessation of discussions with personnel. It's not within the power of council members um, to, um, to not include cuts to staff. It's not within the power of council members to do anything other, anything like what is written there. Um, so it is literally ultra-virus. It's the role of the CEO to undertake the responsibility for the operations and the affairs of council. It's very, very clear in the Act. Um, I believe that's why um, one of the previous motions on those was, was rejected because of that fact. Um, and that's just the way it is under the local government. Okay. And uh, Lord Mayor, and this is a serious question. If it is always ultra-virus, um, to exercise the responsibilities under the Local Government Act with respect to the structure of delivery of services and um, uh, the uh, provision of uh, adequate resources for staff. Um, how, how does a councillor ever, ever honour their requirements or obligations under the Local Government Act. Perhaps we can take that one on notice unless you want to uh, reply to it, but we have actually taken advice on this, that it is ultra virus and therefore I will not be accepting it. Well, Lord Mayor, um, thank you, I'll accept that. Um, uh, and um, you're going to say to me now as a strategy that you can't speak because you've spoken, is that correct? 
as a strategy, I wasn't, but I'm going to look to governance, and we've still got 52 seconds, according to my clock. Uh, hang on. Since when since when <laughs> Jenny just told me. <laughs> questions be part of those speaking time. So, I have 50 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, I think probably this um, demonstrates to anyone watching uh, on the internet, any journalist watching, um, this is one of the reasons why I say constantly this is a dysfunctional council. Um, it is. Councillor, if you would like extended time, just like every other speaker, we can do that. I have to go by the governance information. Uh, so, well, uh, Lord Mayor, I just, I just say, uh, and all I want to say is that the flaws and deep chasms in the governance arrangements for this City Council are very obvious, and, and I do hope that they're drawn to the attention of the Minister or even the Ombudsman. Thank you. So, um, Senior, did you wish to comment on the flaws in our governance and administration? Yeah, three. Well, I, mean, I have to take exception to the suggestion that there are flaws and deep chasms in our governance. I'd suggest to you that our governance processes are exceptional. And if you do have concerns, you should clarify them and report them. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, Progressively, uh, I'm not in a position to um, support uh, this budget, which I think is a first um, for me. I have um, supported uh, council business plans um, in the past. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not supportive of this one, and that's despite the fact that there are some good things uh, that are in the budget. And I do want to acknowledge again the work of all of the administration team in putting this together during what I know has been an exceptionally difficult time. There's been a lot of work um, that's gone into this. So I want to acknowledge that and thank them for that work. And as I said previously, my comments aren't a reflection on the work of the administration. My view is that a budget sets the priorities framework for the organisation as a whole. And I think that this budget, um, for me, uh, misses the mark in terms of the priorities for our council, particularly as we confront this crisis. I've made the point previously around consultation. There was an opportunity a few weeks ago for us to hold a people's panel. And in fact, we workshopped, I think um, you were absent at the time, Lord Mayor, but we did workshop a, an extensive framework of consultation, which involved every interest group possible um, in the city of Adelaide um, at the suggestion of Councillor Kouros. Um, it involved every interest group one could possibly um, think of that was going to be brought into the council chamber to talk about council's response to the pandemic, council's response to the climate crisis. I was very surprised that that was um, opposed, um, and I think that would have been a very good framework to help inform this in terms of consultation. I'm really concerned about the things that are missing from this budget. Um, I mean, once again, we're going into another year with no certainty around the east-west bikeway. Um, and, you know, the cyclist community, I think, are very disappointed about the failure of this council to appropriately um, action that infrastructure project. There's been nothing um, happening on that. We've got a reduction in um, grants, a reduction to support for organisations like the Hutt Street Centre. Um, and they're having their support reduced at a time when um, we're in the middle of a pandemic and they've got more and more people seeking their support um, than ever before. We've also um, got now, um, you know, the potential for uh, more uncertainty for our staff um, and, you know, the potential for job losses within the organisation and a range of efficiencies. And I think that's a really um, regrettable thing. Um, and we've also got within the budget, there's been room found for things that I don't consider to be uh, core responsibilities, things like the ill-conceived driver's month, uh, things like the uh, review into the Hutt Street Centre, which is already costing tens of thousands of dollars at a time when we're meant to be um, making efficiencies. Um, so from my perspective, there hasn't been an effort to try and incorporate, and again, when I say there hasn't been an effort, I'm not referring to administration, I'm referring to the political arm of this organisation. There has not been an effort by this council to actually incorporate the priorities of, um, the broad priorities of elected members and the constituents that we represent. 
Um, and as a result, I do not feel that I'm in a position to um, support this budget, um, which is a shame. Thank you. I have Councillor Curris. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I, I disagree. I think there are a lot of positive aspects of this budget. Um, we're ranging from uh, Melbourne Street and O'Connor Street master planning to the greening of pedestrian upgrade at Whitmore Square, the um, Hutt Street activation of master planning. We've got the Moonton Street design upgrade. We have um, Highland Street, um, we've implemented an improvement program there. We've continued with the Connect Bus, uh, which was a threat at that, at, uh, to us. Um, we've um, supported the homeless, we've um, supporting heritage, we've um, put in two million um, into festival and event spon sponsorships, we've even um, put in two million towards um, climate um, action, um, so we've been leaders in that in that, in that way. Um, we've even um, continued with uh, Jeff Cott Street, which was something that was uh, uh, very uh, well received by North Adelaide um, constituents. We've um, co completed the 10 gig infrastructure. We're on the next stage of the Central Market Arcade. We've even implemented the citywide business uh, model. Uh, we've got a Garner-led stretch of reconciliation action plan. There is so much positive aspects within this budget yes. and we really need to look at the positive things that we are doing for this city. Um, yes, some things have been lost through through the pandemic. Um, hopefully we'll, we will move through that quickly, quickly than what we think and we are, be able to pick some up um, and uh, and thrive again in those areas that, that were lost. But um, I think through it all, we have got some aspects that will continually be able to service and the ratepayers to what they want within the community. Um, and um, I think very well done to administration in regards to that, the work that I've done. And uh, I look forward to all the second place. Thank you, Councillor Kouros, uh, Councillor Abraham's and Councillor Moran and Councillor Kevin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. I, um, uh, I'd like to start by uh, thanking administration for uh, for the wonderful work that they've done with this uh, uh, IVP and budget. Um, I know that putting these things together is, uh, is it is hard work. It's essentially like getting uh, pushed down the uh, the deep end of the pool, but uh, uh, every time they manage to uh, to swim and not sink. But uh, with COVID uh, putting such uh, restraints on uh, on our abilities and on our uh, budget. Uh, it's like attaching a concrete block to them and throwing them in the deep end. So, uh, so well done for uh, uh, still swimming and, uh, and and coming out on top. Um, as Councillor Kouros uh, mentioned, there are heaps and heaps of uh, uh, positives uh, uh, in this document. Um, uh, one is the uh, the Quentin Kenahan uh, playground. That is something that I would like to touch on. Uh, he was a, uh, a fellow uh, area uh, councillor candidate, uh, and uh, and I hope. Um, uh, Quentin, rest in peace. Uh, him and his family are uh, happy with uh, what we've uh, proposed and what will be uh, built there. Uh, there. There's obviously heaps of uh, funding towards uh, festivals uh, and, uh, and events uh, that will hopefully attract people into the city, uh, that will uh, uh, bring our city uh, to life and uh, uh, they'll be able to uh, support the, the traders uh, of our city. Um, and also one of the other things that actually stood out to me, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, was the uh, the citywide business model, the city growth, everything that we're doing uh, to, to build a strong economy. Um, uh, and I think that's going to be particularly important uh, for us coming out of, uh, coming out of COVID uh, and not just surviving, but thriving. Um, uh, I will make a brief point on our consultation. This here before us is the people's panel. Uh, we don't uh, want to consult on the consultation and consult on that consultation of the consultation. When you look at the state government or federal government and look at the way they do their budgets and look at the way we do our budgets, you will clearly see the difference. You will see this is the transparent way of setting the budget, not behind closed doors, the way state government and federal government do it. This is not a, uh, uh, I'm not having a go at them or attacking them, uh, but uh, you look at uh, those levels of government and the way they set their budgets and look at us and the way we deal with our budget. Thank you, uh, Councillor Abraham. Today, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I won't vote for this budget. Um, I don't think we did consult um, 
adequately on whether we whether people wanted uh, massive cuts to staff numbers and spending four million dollars on it i mean you can put it in the notes but unless people um, understand and it gets through to them, it didn't get through to me, most of the councillors, so um, the councillors that aren't on Team Adelaide, that is. Um, when there's a crisis like there is now, a good organisation, and I know this is standing on the sheds the thing like Jeff Got Street, the master plan and all that, and looks after the people that the organisation, the organisation isn't street upgrades, it isn't. Um, fancy lighting, it's the people that work in the organisation. Now good businesses, if you want to call it a business, do that. They keep their intellectual property, they keep their um, their people on and cut everything else. Now if we'd gone out, if I'd gone out to my rate place in North Adelaide and said the uh, administration is suggesting in the budget that we lay off two, two three hundred people that will sit, just join the dog queue then, uh, they would say no. Now let's put off the other things, the fancy things, the things we don't need to do. Jeff Cott Street can wait, wait another few years. Um, nobody said that this budget didn't have contained some lovely things, but it contains the wrong lovely things. People would understand if we look after our firms. As I said, the law firms, the big law firms, the big medical firms, right at the beginning, they garnered enormous love from their staff and loyalty by saying, we will not get rid of you. That's one thing we can assure you, you will not be thrown out. We're throwing out our people. It's awful. I've never been so angry as I am now. And for the, uh, for the, the CEO to say, to, and Lord Mayor, that's ultra virus for us not to direct the budget, it's, it's just not in the spirit. Not ultra virus, um, sorry, as a point of clarification, it's ultra virus to direct the CEO, not to direct the budget. Well, I think the, the, it was directing the budget. Now, it's a, it's, I think the CEO is listening to the council, this council, not this council. And I think it's really foolish to um, put projects. I mean, master plans are just things that line somebody's office. They're very expensive. It doesn't mean one flower bed, no, nothing happens with the master plan. But you're throwing actual people at knowing that they can't get a job. I just absolutely can't believe you're doing that. I spoke to people, I've been here a long time, and I know workers that are here, experienced workers, workers that are really good, that we've thrown out, planning people. I just, I, I cannot believe, and that the services will go, will go because we're spending it on the wrong things. To quote Jay Lum Express, there'll be rats running in the street by the end of this. And it is, not, the federal government didn't give us job because they expected us to look after their pe our people. How much do you think they're borrowing to look after the people. Look what the federal government's doing. They're not worrying about street upgrades and, and let's build a freeway from Melbourne to Sydney. They said, batten down the hatches, we are looking after our people. And we're not looking after our people. It's just awful. Like, I, I just, you can't even stand this in the room and look at you. It's so cruel, it's so unkind. Councillor Kerry. Your hands. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, simply uh, say that I support this uh, support this motion. I support the business plan and budget. I think um, it is testament to an extremely competent and extremely competent uh, administrative leadership team. Uh, an administrative leadership team who have made the job of being a councillor much less difficult than it otherwise than otherwise would have been the case uh, right now. Uh, in fact, uh, anyway, um, it, 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 uh, almost to the point of being untenable given what we've been through uh, for, for some new councillors has been, we've been able to conduct our business as councillors thanks to our ability on relying uh, on, on the sheer competence and integrity of the executive, of the, of the leadership uh, administrative team um, that we have um, uh, working for the council. Um, my constituents, I can say, are, are very grateful for that. Um, I think it's remarkable that there's a budget being delivered, uh, the continued services such as the connected bus, a uh, million dollars uh, in the heritage incentive schemes. Um, I think Councillor Kouros uh, and Councillor Abraham today did a much better job than I could in articulating uh, all of the things that have been retained. Um, this is actually 
um, despite all of the adverse circumstances, a very positive budget. Uh, and I look, look forward to uh, seeing uh, the continuation of the program throughout the year. Thank you. Um, I might say a few words before you sum up. I'll speak now and then. Oh, oh, I just wanted to I wanted to echo the sentiments of other councillors um, uh, and add to them uh, a little bit. Um, we're now sort of approaching the middle of the term, um, Lord Mayor, and, and the budget is now beginning to reflect the initiatives of of uh, that councillors have brought to the organisation in addition to Obviously, the majority of it is still the work of the administration. Um, uh, but I want to I want to acknowledge some of the work that's been done going into this. When we're thinking about main streets, that was obviously a big part of your election platform and mine, um, Lord Mayor. But of course, Councillor Kouros um, uh, as well, are very passionate about small uh, business um, and, and having thriving main streets. Um, and I think the language I used was revitalising our precincts, and, and that's very much um, what this budget is on track to doing. So I, I acknowledge yourself and Councillor Kouros for that. Um, uh, Councillor Abraham today, uh, I see in here we've got greening initiatives uh, for the southwest and the northwest of the city, where we know the tree canopy um, uh, is, uh, is too low as a percentage. Um, uh, and the residents and businesses down there languish, particularly on hot days, and we really want to combat the heat island effect. So, um, Councillor Abraham today understands that by virtue of uh, his design and architectural experience, and um, and obviously was resident down, down there. So, um, uh, it's good to see people representing their local communities there. Um, uh, Councillor Noel, uh, who's incredibly passionate about the citywide business model, um, uh, something that we really need to get. Right, something that uh, something that actually really underpins a lot of the the prosperity that we hope to achieve in the coming years. Um, uh, it's really really quite exciting, and it's always a pleasure to pick Franz's brain on that one um, uh, and get some of those ideas. And of course, when it comes to someone who understands the heart of the city in many ways, which is the central market, um, he always brings such a contribution um, in that respect. Uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Ho as well. Such a fierce advocate, oh, such a fierce advocate for the Chinatown <laughs> precinct um, uh, and his constituents. Whether it's things such as the International Promoters Program, which is which is fantastic, uh, whether it's things such as CCTV subsidies for Chinatown, um, uh, and as well the Munta Street upgrade. It's so wonderful to see a, a multicultural member of the community. Uh, representing his community so effectively in this chamber. Um, uh, and of course, Councillor Kira, last but by no means least, um, uh, <clears throat> some fantastic initiatives, fantastic initiatives produced by Councillor Kira. Uh, I'm very, very excited to see <laughs> Drivers Month. I'm incredibly excited to see Drivers Month and how that will unfold in the city and support <clears throat> all of our businesses. And just lastly, um, just lastly, Lord Mayor, members, if I may have members, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <clears throat> um, uh, when we're thinking about as well things such as heritage protection, Councillor Kira is a fierce a protector of heritage, and we saw that with the motion the other day. Um, uh, and of course, live music, an advocate for the arts to boot as well. Um, but lastly, I just wish to thank Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I wish to thank them about 87.7 million times our non-residential ratepayers are the people that actually keep the city going, are the people that pay for absolutely everything that we do. Uh, and I want to thank uh, the other lot, 27.2 million times, uh, the residential ratepayers as well, um, uh, for the for what they do, keeping the city going. Uh, we wouldn't be here without them, and that's, that's why we're delivering this budget for them. This is very much a budget for them and for our community, and I wholeheartedly endorse it. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Mayor. I am actually going to speak. There are there are actually uh, some other contributions, and I think that the new strategic plan, which this budget reflects, also reflects contribution by all members of the uh, of our council. Um, and so uh, I think you know you called out some uh, particular ones, but our new strategic plan 
is reflected in this budget and the strategic plan has actually been a piece of work that we have done collectively as one council. Um, I do want to also add my thanks to the work of the administration and the executive and the teams that have worked behind this um, in the budget as well as all of those individual um, projects. Uh, there, we've also managed to get $15 million in external funding um, and in partnership with state government and that has uh, allowed us, will allow us to deliver a skate park, the Clinton Kernaghan Play Space, Black Spot on the West Terrace, as well as a whole lot of um, outdoor activation, the completion of markets, River Bank, etc. There's a lot of projects that we've been doing in partnership and that is also reflected in here. Um, I do also, uh, to your point, Councillor Sims, the bikeway money is in there. I am still determined that we will deliver a bikeway uh, in this term of council, and that will be resolved, I believe, once we bring in the city access strategy, which has also been done in partnership, which I hope to bring into the council in the next few months. Um, and I think that uh, we will uh, move towards the week. It's unbelievable the amount that we actually have delivered so far this term. Um, reflecting on you know our responsibilities I think that uh, this is a, uh, a good budget I think it does actually deliver on a lot of work and things like the master plans are projects that require people so if you actually look at the projects that are in there they all are there supporting uh, the people that are delivering them within our administration um, I will go to the deputy lord mayor to sum up Thumbed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Division. <coughs> Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kuros. Members, 3.6 on the agenda tonight is the adoption. Option evaluations 2020-2021. I'll look for a move at Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Members? Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? I'll reserve one. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. Lord Mayor, I'm asking for it to be noted that I'm leaving. If I don't support the budget, there's no point in remaining for the other members. Thank you, Councillor Martin, for you explaining you leaving the chamber. It will be noted. And I, I'm really sorry. Sorry. Members, would anybody like to speak to the valuations? If not, I'll go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Okay, we can record as unanimous for those that are in the room. Um, and I'm sure the, the uh, that will reflect the Councillor Moran um, mm. departed a while ago as well. Um, members, 3.7 is the declaration of rates 2020 2021. Look for a mover. I'm actually just going to. Uh, no? Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canal. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, thank you. Councillor Canal. Councillor Sims. Well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wanted to. Uh, reiterate my um, disappointment in terms of the discussion around the rates that there wasn't um, an exemption given to uh, people who are unemployed and who've lost their um, jobs during the pandemic as was proposed um, at council uh, on Tuesday night and um, it would have cost only two hundred thousand dollars and it was opposed by council I'm not sure why um, that said I will um, vote for this um, because obviously we do need to correct, collect our rates. Um, I think we do need to have a discussion, a serious discussion about what we do to address our, our revenue issue. Um, within the council, I've been pushing for that for some time. Um, I hope that we can have that discussion in a meaningful way um, and actually really look at what options we have um, to uh, increase the revenue uh, coming to us, um, recognising that, of course, we're in a difficult um, position. Um, so disappointed that people who are unemployed have been left out in terms of getting um, a, uh, an exemption. It would have been very, very easy to do. I don't know why it wasn't done. Um, I do welcome the uh, hardship provisions, though, and I know that we are one of the few councils um, 
in the state that does offer that. I think that's a very important um, program. Um, and I, I suspect, sadly, there will be lots of people that need to take advantage of it this time. But it would be great if next budget, we do look at people who are unemployed if this recession is ongoing and carve out a special exemption for them. Thank you, members. If not, go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Can you have that? We can record that as unanimous. Uh, 3.8 is the declaration of Rumble Mall Special Rate 2020-2021. Councillor Canal, uh, second is Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Yes, Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I know that I'm begrudgingly seconding this. Uh, I, in many ways, fundamentally disagree with the Rumble Mall. Um, uh, levy because I think it levies uh, all of those businesses indiscriminately. Um, uh, nevertheless, I see the need for it, particularly at the moment. Um, uh, but uh, I hope that this is something we may be able to do away with in the future, um, provided we see the prosperity coming from the citywide business model. Members? If not, I'll back to, uh, go back to Council Connell to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes Councillor Corus, we can have that recorded as unanimous. Uh, members, that brings us to the end of the meeting tonight. Uh, thank you for your attendance and your passion and the discussions that we have had. Um, we will see you all in, uh, next week.